It was December 15th, 2016, when police were called to the Chessunt Railway Station in Hertfordshire, England. After reports came in that a man had thrown himself in front of an oncoming train. There they found 64-year-old Theodore Johnson on the tracks. The Jamaican-born man of Dartmouth Park Hill, London survived the ordeal, but had lost his right arm and left hand. It wasn't until police entered Johnson's home later that day that they realised the horrible event that preceded his suicide attempt. An event that would remind them of his criminal past. A past life which had also been plagued with mental illness. Following his admittance to hospital, police went to Johnson's home in Dartmouth Park Hill, but little could prepare them for what they would find there. The lifeless body of Theodore Johnson's former partner Angela Best was lying on the floor in the living room. The 51-year-old grandmother and mother of four had extensive wounds to her head, and a silver claw hammer lay close to her body. A dressing gown belt had been tied twice around her neck, and there were blood stains on the wall above her head. Further examination of the scene found a smashed lamp next to the doorway and a mobile phone lay in pieces on the floor and on the table. The pathology report stated that the cause of death was strangulation and extensive head trauma caused by at least six blows from the hammer. Theodore Johnson was arrested on January 19, 2017 while being treated at the Royal London Hospital. It was following his eventual trial in January of 2018 that the extent of Johnson's past crimes, which by now had been forgotten by many, came back to public attention. Back in 1981, a 27-year-old Theodore Johnson was living with his then-wife Yvonne and their two young sons in Wolverhampton. The couple had met in Jamaica, and Yvonne moved to England, soon to be followed by Theodore in 1980. During an argument between the pair on May 18, 1981, Yvonne was hit over the head with an ashtray and a vase, and then pushed from the balcony of their ninth floor home in the Cobden Lane neighbourhood. She died from her injuries. It was reported that Yvonne Johnson wouldn't let her husband go to church because she didn't think he was dressed well enough. During the argument that followed, it was said that Yvonne threatened to kill him, hit him with a book and then an ashtray, which he then turned on her after wrestling it away. Johnson admitted to police in 1981 that he had pushed his wife to the edge of their balcony at Franchise House in Blakenhall until she slipped and clung to the edge. He then stood and watched her until she dropped. Following this, he changed his clothes and met his son after school. Mr Johnson was tried at Stafford Crown Court and sentenced to three years in prison on November 4th, 1981, following a three-day trial. He had initially faced a murder charge, but was handed the lesser charge of manslaughter after claiming extensive provocation during his marriage. Indeed, the way in which the incident was reported in 1981 painted a grim picture of his life as a battered husband. The court heard from Johnson that he had been bullied into doing house chores and cooking. The Express and Star even reported that the eight-stone Johnson had complained about the bullying he suffered at the hands of his twelve-stone wife. Apparently all this was taken very seriously in 1981, when Judge Talbot told Johnson before sentencing... You have led a good and decent life, and you are not a violent man. You have been a good father to your two young boys, and I am satisfied that what happened, happened because of the deep provocation you had been put to. By 1986, Johnson's somewhat lenient sentence had been served, and was two years behind him. This is when he moved from Wolverhampton to Finsbury Park in London with his new partner, a care home worker named Yvonne Bennett. 
the couple stayed together for the next six years, and in that time they had a daughter. Then, in 1992, Miss Bennett began an affair with a fellow care worker at the old people's home she worked at in Stoke Newington. She claimed that Johnson's violent and controlling nature had led her to be unfaithful. After an argument one evening, she ended the relationship, and Johnson left their home at Fallowfield Six Acres Estate in Finsbury Park. On September 20th, 1992, he returned and begged for her to take him back. When she refused and rejected a box of chocolates he had bought, he strangled the 25-year-old Yvonne Bennett with a belt while their baby daughter slept in the next room. Following the death of his second victim, Johnson attempted suicide by hanging himself from a tree, but the rope he used snapped. He then admitted himself to hospital and it was decided by doctors that he was suffering with deep depression and had a severe personality disorder. He was then sentenced to an indefinite hospital order under sections 37 and 41 of the Mental Health Act. He admitted to manslaughter again on March 5, 1993, after pleading guilty at the Old Bailey on the grounds of diminished responsibility. But it only took two years before Johnson was allowed out of the hospital on unescorted leave to attend a City and Guilds course in furniture restoration two days a week. This is where he met Angela Best, who had recently moved to London from Manchester with her four children. He applied for a full discharge in May of 1996, but it was not granted. The now 42-year-old Johnson and 26-year-old Best began what would be a 20-year-long relationship. In October of 1997, Johnson was granted discharge from the hospital on the condition he reside in assisted living quarters, attended all meetings with social workers, and let them know of any relationships he had with women, so that they could be informed of his past convictions. Unsurprisingly, Johnson did not disclose his relationship with Angela Best, and startlingly, she remained unaware of the events of his past life, until three months before her death, when she found a letter containing details of the killing of one of his previous partners. Following this discovery in September of 2016, Angela Best ended her relationship with Theodore Johnson and appeared to have moved on when she began seeing a man named Ronald Emmanuel. Angela Best's children all described Johnson as an abusive controlling man and told of how he punched her one day when she discovered he'd been unfaithful. Angela's new love interest was a godsend to the family, and her children exclaimed that she was the happiest they'd ever seen her. This was unwelcome news to Johnson though. He saw the happy couple walking along Tottenham Court Road one day in November of 2016. He pulled up beside them and shouted, Is that the guy you're running around with? In the weeks that followed, Johnson repeatedly turned up at Miss Best's house on Forster Road, Tottenham, in an attempt to win her back. It said that he also neglected his own health in the hope that it would gain her sympathy. They remained in contact though, and on December 14th, 2016, Angela Best told her daughter that she would be accompanying Johnson to a passport application appointment at the Jamaican Embassy in Kensington the following day. The following day, Angela Best received a number of voice call messages from Johnson, asking when she was going to arrive at his home. We now know that Angela Bess used her Oyster card to catch two buses to Johnson's home and made a phone call to him at 9.04am. It's believed that she arrived at Johnson's home in Dartmouth Park Hill at around 9.20am. Her son Fabian Collins attempted to call her later that morning, but got no response. At some point that morning, Theodore Johnson killed his third victim and former partner, Angela Best. Police found her body later that day when they arrived at the premises in the hope of finding Johnson's next of kin. During the police investigation, Johnson's car was seen on CCTV driving along the A10 road at 1.30pm towards Cheshunt Station in Hertfordshire, where he planned to take his own life. Two hours later his attempt failed, leaving him severely wounded. He was arrested on Thursday, January 19th, 2017, after weeks of intensive treatment at the London Royal Hospital.
Almost one year later, a wheelchair-bound Johnson sat in the dock at the Old Bailey on Tuesday, January 2nd, 2018, and admitted to killing Angela Best. But for the third time in 35 years, he claimed it was manslaughter due to diminished responsibility. Judge Richard Marks, in light of this, was expecting a lengthy trial, but Johnson soon changed his plea to guilty for the murder charge. On Friday, January 5th, 2018, Theodore Johnson was sentenced to a minimum of 26 years. Sentencing Judge Marks said, The attack by you on Angela Best was sustained, vicious and utterly brutal. She suffered an unimaginably terrible death. Such repeated offending, resulting in three separate court cases, must be almost unprecedented. There have been calls to action to find out why Johnson was allowed back into society to kill for a third time, and former healthcare assistant to Johnson, Sandra Davies, said he should never have been released, adding that she predicted that he would kill again. Speaking in Johnson's defence was Annette Henry. She mentioned that Johnson had suffered at the hands of an abusive father in Jamaica, blaming these experiences for his behaviour later in life. She also said, he does not wish to be alive. He hates himself for what happened. We recognise the devastation felt by the family members. But these words were immaterial to the prosecution and of no comfort to the family of Angela Best, nor, it can be fairly assumed, to the families of Yvonne Johnson or Yvonne Bennett.